John is trapped in jail with enemies on every side, while Lada and Carlos are also trapped in a jail. This one of Lada's own making. Lada and Carlos win the escape race. Once again, we have another solid episode where our Scooby gang splits up to handle an A and B plot. This is what I've been waiting and begging for all season. Mary and John are advancing the season arc while Carlos and Lada go on a monster of the week hunt which advances and reveals something about their characters. We'll start with Carlos and Lada. By far my biggest complaint is that thus far these two were always the pair handling the B-plot in these split episodes. This story in particular, I really wish John had been there instead of Carlos. Especially since at the start there were illusions that Lata was trying to help John with his mental health. It would have been fitting here for him to have turned it around and, quote, returned the favor, so to speak, and help her with her mental health. Although, given we also know that Carlos served in the war himself, I was disappointed that he didn't draw on that experience some to help Lada through her struggles. Especially given that we have seen that Jojo can act that part very well, it would have been a nice callback for him to have used his time in therapy to help his friend. They even had a name drop of Mars Nito earlier in this episode. The monster itself... Uh, was fine, a rather clever way to make use of a limited set, and was one of the creepier ones they've done this season. More than almost any other monster we've had, this one really felt like it belonged in Supernatural. Now, let's take a moment to talk about Maggie. So, in stories, it is common to have an inciting incident to kick off events. Very often, a person will be involved in that incident. Now, who that person is as a character tends to be far less important than how the other characters react to the incident. The most obvious example is the opening of Supernatural. Who Mary and Jessica are as characters is not as important as who they are to John, Sam, and Dean, who are our main characters. Star Trek The Next Generation also did this in an episode where a random member of the crew dies. We know next to nothing about who that person was because the episode was more about how her death affects our main characters, their reactions to it. Maggie has been the big cloud hanging over the entire season as it is very clear they intended her tragedy to be the main inciting incident for the series. Who she was meant less than how she affected Mary's friends and family. Well, this works to a point. The longer a story goes and the more you return to the lost persons, the more you will start needing to develop that person into a full character in the story. And this is not a bad thing. In fact, creating a completely off-screen character is a good writing challenge I recommend. For an example of this being done brilliantly, look at the sitcom Frasier, who made Niall's wife Maris an entire three-dimensional character who never once appeared on screen because the writers eventually realized they could never, ever find a real person who could do the role justice. This episode highlighted how much Winchester's has been struggling with what to do with Maggie. Not because they gave her a face and an actress this episode, but because they keep going to her as a solution and explanation throughout the season. And they keep doing it all backwards. For an example, back in episode 104, they theorize her room, which had remained shut, might have the answer for the monster of the week. Yet it is not until episode 108 that we learned why. Because she had this whole specialization on pagan gods which at least was followed up on in this episode with the whole magic bracelet being pagan god related. That was good. But if the show keeps wanting to go back to her again and again, which is fine, I actually endorse the idea, then it needs to fully flesh her out as an off-screen character. It's not enough to tell us that she was big on books about gods. We need to know why. In this episode, we finally learned that she and Lata were apparently close. Well, where's Mary in all this? 
Earlier episodes repeated that Mary and Maggie were close, yet we're not given any indication that the three girls were an inseparable trio. Did Maggie do stuff with Mary and Lata separately? Why didn't Mary join them at the Alice Cooper concert? This, this isn't a lot to ask. The episode gives us some of what we need with the revelation that Samuel, Mary, and Maggie all had a craving for toastettes. That is a great Perfect touch. I'm thrilled we're getting this now. What annoys me is that we didn't have any of this earlier. We've only got two episodes left this season. Seeing Maggie appear to Lotta should have felt like a reward to those of us who have watched every episode. We should have had this better sense of who Maggie was as a character so that now, when she appears, it feels to us like we're getting to glimpse a legend. That this is the girl we've heard so much about. This is the person who has driven so much of the motivations this season. Instead, it was just a meh. So, as a lesson, I want to say in your own stories, learn from this example. If a person in your story is only important as to how they motivate your main characters, then keep it limited and focused to that, motivation and reaction. But if you're going to expand that person's impact beyond that, where... Their past choices affect the plot and more in the present day, then you need to flesh out that person as a full off screen character. And to do that, you need to get building on them as soon as possible. John and Mary's plot was pretty good. A lot of things well done and executed through there. This was a great example of the opportunities a prequel uh, can present as. In this episode, we learn that John was a POW in the war, which I don't recall coming up before, but it gives us some perspective on how he might have endured his time in hell. And I really enjoyed Drake's performance of all that in this episode. There was a hint, especially at the end, where you can see it looks like John is not just upset at what was done to him, but that someone innocent had to suffer. Sometimes Supernatural got a little too focused on the hunting things part of the family business, and it can be easy to forget that saving people was a part of it too. And there was always an undercurrent to the show that John impressed that part about saving people onto his sons. Mary versus Betty, again, I want to say that this would have had a lot more impact had the season dragged out the love triangle just a bit longer, so that then this confrontation between the two of them would have had more catharsis. I did like that Betty wasn't immediately on board with the Scooby gang, but had to be a little bit more convinced. That was a nice touch. Uh, this whole episode really did remind me of one of my favorite X-File episodes, number 519, Filet Adieu. I think I may be mispronouncing it. Although I just realized that the zombies in that episode had three triangular dots on the back of their necks, just like Akrita victims in the Winchesters. Maybe the revelation in the finale is going to be that the X-Files are what's been invading all along? All in all, I'd rate this episode as somewhere between 3 and 4 shells, so I'll give it a 3.5 rating. It is, again, let down by the earlier season not being as strong and setting up what this episode wants to pay off. There is a lot of good here, and the show is continuing a generally upward trajectory. So I have some hope. And join me next time as we see the next to last episode of the Winchesters. Mm -hmm.